You know, God wants to heal your body, deliver you, and also put into right order and prosper or bless your finances. Uh, in the Bible, poverty is never a good thing. In fact, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, it says that he became poor. You know, Jesus took our sin, he took every, every curse, but it also says he became poor that we might become rich. There, you know, I, I almost never talk about finances because um, there's such an issue with um, a misuse uh, or an abuse of, of uh, prosperity theology. But I, I believe that Christians need to know the truth about how they can walk in the blessing of God, in the wholeness of God, in their finances, because the Bible has much to say about it. Amen. First of all, what is your perspective? Where are you going? The world is running after finances, money, and the, the, the gaining of possessions and materialism. Where are you going? We read in Matthew 16, 26, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So the most important thing is to get your priorities right. And the priority of God for you is the condition of your soul. That your soul be saved, washed, sanctified in the blood of Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the love of God. But hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our, our hearts. This world is temporal. Our eyes should be set on heaven and the glory of God and the true riches of heaven. Amen. At the cross, Jesus Christ provided for your blessing, the healing of your body. By his stripes, you have been healed and the blessing of your finances. But, you know, when I talk about blessing of finances, you've got to put it in the God perspective. The God's perspective is that when you are blessed, you are blessed indeed. It's not like he, decomp he puts into a compartment, oh, this is your finances, this is your body, and so on. He wants to bless every area of your life. So 2 Corinthians 8, 9, I already spoke about it. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, that you through his poverty might become rich. So that being rich is, is this the glory of God coming into you. Hallelujah. It's a gift from heaven. It's a blessing in every area of your life. Finances is only a small part of it. Then... Okay, when I think the, one of the most important thing with finances is to put your trust in God. You know, we, we take the promises of God, we access the promises of God by faith. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which can never be moved. You have to have an unshaking confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ with the, finance, with the finances. In Matthew 6, 9, Jesus says to pray like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. God knows that you need the things that you need in life and Jesus instructs us to look to our Heavenly Father for his provision. Number one, look to Jesus. Look to, everyone say, look to Jesus. You know, you, it, with everything that's going on in the world with the pandemic and people losing their jobs and so on, I'm sure people are looking around. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What's the future hold? What we need to do is still our hearts and look to Jesus.
give us this our daily bread praise God now in the glory of God in the glory of Jesus Christ in the anointing of Jesus there's every form of blessing in the cloud of glory we're in the glory right now there's every form of blessing we have so many testimonies of people who their lives were turned around you know they were dying they were they were sick they were tormented and God healed their body but also blessed their finances in the anointing there is blessing for every area of our life Philippians 4:19 Paul's talking about finances and says and my God shall supply everyone say supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus then Paul says in Ephesians 1 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace so this grace of God will save you will heal you will deliver you and will get you out of poverty and debt amen there is abundant provision in the anointing and we have the um we have the story in mark 6 41 where the crowds come to jesus and jesus is in the wilderness and there's nothing for them to eat and they're concerned that they will faint on their way home and jesus in mark 6 41 says and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish he looked up to heaven hallelujah I, you know i've always been impacted by those words where was jesus looking he wasn't looking to you know the local grocery store you know the markets he wasn't looking to a rich man he he looked up to heaven he was looking to his father and that's what we need to do all the time to be looking to our heavenly father he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fish he divided among them all so they all ate and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men hallelujah uh, in the anointing Jesus was standing there 5,000 men it says and then there would have been women and children so let's say about 15,000 people and he was standing there and the anointing was there and the bread multiplied and multiplied and the fish multiplied and multiplied and multiplied you know God will never bless we'll talk about this a little bit later but God will never bless your flesh but he will always bless his word his word is his will if you walk according to his word you're in his will and he will abundantly bless every financial need and provide for it it's truth it was god's will that jesus christ preach in the wilderness to the to the multitudes and so god provided the heavenly father provided hallelujah there is so there's abundant provision for every need in the glory secondly there is provision an abundant provision as we obey the holy spirit who brings the word of god to us so we have a situation in matthew 17 24 and when they jesus disciples had come to capernaum those who received the temple tax came to pick to peter so the the tax collectors came to peter and said does your teacher not pay the temple tax and jesus anticipated peter and said what do you think simon from whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from their strangers or from strangers so there's corruption peter said to him from strangers jesus said to him then the sons are free nevertheless lest we offend them go to the sea cast in a hook take the fish that comes up first and when you've opened its mouth you will find a piece of money 
take that and give it to them for me and you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, uh, as Peter was led by the Holy Spirit, as Peter was led by the Holy Spirit, God provided in abundance for their tax needs. Amen. You know, God knows your needs. It could be tax. It could be some other need. It could be the rent. It could be the mortgage. Whatever it is, God knows your needs. And he has a way of providing. Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit, Jesus sent to us as our helper and teacher. Isaiah 48, 17 says, Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Amen. The Holy Spirit will teach you, show you what you should do. He will teach you how to profit. He will teach you how to be successful. Praise God. You know, the Holy Spirit is not a God of failure. He will teach you how to succeed in life. So sometimes people write in to me and they want to know, should I tithe or should I not tithe? The important thing that the New Testament emphasizes and also the Old Testament is honoring God with your finances. And in the New Testament, we see this emphasis on faith. So, for example, if you tithe as a religious thing, you know, it's your obligation or whatever, you do it as a religious thing and not out of faith, it does not please God. But if you, if you believe in tithing, but also you give unto your father in faith, believing that he sees what you are doing, it will honor and please God. Amen. So the way that we honor God with our finances is we take all the finances and use them for his glory. We, we take them with a heart of faith. All our activity is done in faith with our finances. And then his blessing will be upon you because he will be pleased. You know, Cain and Abel both uh, had brought a sacrifice, but Abel brought it with faith, according to Hebrews 11. Cain brought his sacrifice without faith. God rejected the sacrifice of Cain and accepted the sacrifice of Abel. Two people can bring their tithes to the Lord. One is accepted, the other is not. One is religious, the other one has a heart of faith. God is always looking at our heart and our heart attitude. Praise God. All right, now we're talking about uh, God's way of having healthy finances. And the Bible is clear that one way is protect. there's a protection that comes upon you by saving, by savings. Proverbs 15, 10, 15 says, The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. So people who just spend, 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 and don't, you know, they don't believe in, in saving, you know, their destruction, when troubled times come, is their poverty. So savings is a way that God has has meant for you to be provided for. So we know in Genesis 41, when, when uh, Pharaoh had a dream, and in the dream he saw the, the cows and the wheat, and uh, Joseph interpreted the dream as seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And the wisdom that God gave Joseph for the nation of Israel, for the nation of Egypt, that also saved his Joseph's family was the wisdom of saving finances. And so Joseph put into effect a way for the nation of Egypt to save. So we, we read um, uh, in Genesis 41, 
Verse 35, and let them gather, Joseph says, let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Then that food shall be a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, but the land may not perish during the famine. So saving is a concept in the Bible. It comes from God. Hallelujah. So, um, God is looking at our heart. Where is our heart? And one of the things he's looking at is, are we, are we living with an attitude of contentment? Everyone say contentment. Being content with what you have. You know, Paul said that he was content in lack and he was content in abundance. Being content in Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about in life. You know, if you've got food and clothing, Hallelujah, Paul, Paul says. Be content. And so we read in Hebrews 13, 5, let your conduct be without covetousness. You know, some people, they just want, want, want stuff. They want what the neighbors have, you know, whatever, whatever it is. They want what is being advertised. Oh, I have to have this. I have to have that. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself, God, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know, the truth is that God, if we put our trust in the Lord, he will always look after us. Pandemic or no pandemic, he will always look after us. So just be content. And this world is passing. You know, it's, before you know it, it'll be gone. And if you've lived your life for the stuff of this world, when, when you're gone, you're not going to take it with you, are you? So keep your eyes on heaven. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 6.6 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world and is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Now a snare in the Bible is a curse. People who run after money and this is their life and this is what they want, they end up being in a curse. They end up ruining marriages, ruining families, having all sorts of problems. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Praise God. One of the big issues with, with people with their finances in the West is their spending habits. You know, they, they just... It's like a drug that they need. It's like an addiction. They just spend, spend, spend. Shopping, uh, what do we call it? Shopping holics. Uh, shopaholics. There you go. Um, James 4 3 says, You ask and do not receive. You're asking God, Oh Lord, help me with my finances. Help me with this. Help me with the electricity bill. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly that you might spend it on your pleasures. There you go. Pretty much sums up a lot of people today. They're like, Lord, give me this, give me that. Lord, I don't have this. What am I, how am I going to pay this bill? Well, maybe you need to stop spending on your flesh, start saving money and honoring God with your finances. Someone say amen. So that this message is meant to help people so that they can have wholeness in their finances. So James says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Hallelujah. Now, did you know that with your finances, you can make God indebted to you? Let's read about it. Proverbs 19:17. He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord. That means that God is in debt to you. If you've lent to him, then he's got to repay you, right? He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord and he will pay back what he has given. Amen. Proverbs 22.9 He who has a generous eye will be blessed for he gives of his bread to the poor. When you give to the poor, you touch the heart of God. When you give to the poor, you touch the heart of God and he will repay it. 
And when God repays, he repays with blessing. You know, there's like a drug dealer could come and give you $10,000 and God could provide $10,000. One would be cursed and one would be blessed. Not all money is the same. Not all money is the same. A Christian can give money in a heart of faith to the poor and that money comes under the influence of the anointing and is blessed. And when some government says, I oh, will throw a few million dollars here and it's all gone in corruption and stuff, there's a difference between those who give in the Holy Spirit and those who don't. Not all money is the same. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, generosity, I believe that generosity comes because you know your father. I know I've mentioned this before, but uh, years ago, a family member had told me, oh, our family is poor. You were saying, you know, our family is poor. And then one day the Lord took me in a dream into his treasury room and I saw the gold of heaven and he said to me, this is your inheritance. And I've never thought of myself poor again. You know, stinginess often comes from a poverty mentality. Generosity comes because we know that we are rich in Christ. We know that we are rich, that we can be a blessing to others because our Heavenly Father has infinite, no-ending funds. Amen? The treasures of heaven never cease. Praise God. And I, I, my own personal experience in the ministry is, you know, in traveling around the world with a team and so on, that God has never failed. He's always abundantly supplied our needs. You know, if you get into God's will, which is his word, you're doing his word, you're doing his work, you're seeking to please him, he will supply your every need. You know, we are all ambassadors in Christ. We're all meant to be sent by him. And an ambassador never pays his own expenses. God supplies. The king always supplies the needs of the ambassador because the ambassador represents the king. You are an ambassador. He will provide for you. Your king is rich. Amen. No one is poor in Christ. We are all rich in him. You may not have anything. You might be sick. You might, you know, all these bad things are happening. But if you are in Christ, you are rich. Being financially rich is not the same as being spiritually rich. Someone can be financially rich and have nothing in Christ. They can have spiritual poverty. Let me tell you about um, a time when I went to the Philippines and I was waiting on the Lord before the meeting and I was taken into a vision by God's grace and I, I looked at the people in the vision before I got to the meeting and the Lord pointed out a couple who were sitting, a married couple, and he said to me, this couple are in business. And... Uh, so I went to the meeting, preached, I got down and, and walked down the aisle according to the vision and I came to a couple who was seated in the vision, was seated in that spot and I said to them, are you involved in business? And they said, yes. And then according to the vision, I said to the man, you are in spiritual poverty. I said it publicly. Now, that has got to be one of the worst rebukes anyone could get. If you are in spiritual poverty, you are in sin. And then I said to the woman, uh, something like, it's on, on the video, I'll put it up on YouTube. Um, and God is giving you the fruit of the womb. The power of God fell on her and she conceived, she's now got a, a three or four year old girl. And the, the man, uh, it later came out that he was in adultery and he left. Spiritual poverty is one of the worst things that you could ever be in. Spiritual poverty comes when you're in sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. When we give, God is looking at our heart. That's what I've been saying. And we have the story of the woman with the mite. 
you know, the two mites, which are like two copper coins. And Jesus is watching and he sees the rich pouring in their money. And he sees this woman who gives her whole livelihood. And Jesus commends her as sacrificial giving. The, the What hurts, you know, God will see. God is watching the attitude of the heart. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. The words purposes in his heart, the Bible talks about be sure that you fulfill your vows. When you purpose in your heart to give unto the Lord, to give to the Master, whatever you purpose in your heart as he put on your your heart to do, be sure that you fulfill that before him so that it becomes blessing to you. Because when you make a vow, when you purpose something in your heart and then you don't fulfill it, it can become a curse unto you. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make, listen to this, all grace abound toward you. When God sees the condition of your heart, the way that you're giving, what you're doing in him, as you're led by the Holy Spirit, you're blessing the poor, you're blessing children in poverty, whatever it is, you're helping orphans, um, widows, whatever it is you're doing. As God sees the condition of your heart, what you're doing in love and faith, his grace will abound towards you. Hallelujah. As you scatter, he will bless. Praise God. That you always having, I like all these all, all words, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. I believe that the work of God is abundantly provided for. When you give yourself to God's work, whatever God has called you to do in life, as you give yourself to that, God will abundantly supply to do his work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I just want to finish up with a couple of things. One reason why some people are lacking financially is simply laziness. They're not diligent. God has given us work to do to be a blessing. Proverbs 6, 9 says, How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. Just get off your bed and get a job. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And then, you know, then, then there's those who, who just waste their time talking, talking, talking. In all labor, there is profit, but idle chatter leads to poverty. Hallelujah. Praise God. Finally, I want to ask you, all right, you're doing everything right, but your finances are a mess. My question is, is there a demon robbing your finances? Do you need deliverance? You know, a budget will not help you when you have a demon that's robbing your finances. You need deliverance. And Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it even more abundantly. Some of you who are watching, you need deliverance. For your finances to be blessed. You've got a demon robbing your finances. You need deliverance. You know, don't try to fix a spiritual problem with a budget. It doesn't work. It's like putting water in a bucket with a hole in it. 
you just leaks someone stealing and it's not a physical person hallelujah praise god praise god praise god god is good yeah i believe that you know that that christians that people need to know what the bible has to say about finances because some people their finances are a mess they they're in so much debt they're struggling struggling with it with the family finances and everything and god has a way forward if you read your bible he'll teach you you know hallelujah hallelujah 